More and more people of color are getting the opportunity to be in front of the camera. More diverse actors are being cast in movies and more diverse models are being hired for campaigns. But it seems like not a lot of people know how to light their skin. So my friends, today I'm gonna teach you just how to do that. Now lighting is a style choice, of course, but today I'm gonna teach you a few tips on lighting diverse skin tones and not have them looking all muddy or underexposed. Now to understand lighting people of color, the first thing you need to understand is the way that black and white works, meaning how they react to light. White reflects light, black, absorbs light. And the same goes for colors. Darker colors absorb more light, lighter colors reflect more light. So when you think about skin, it's the same thing. The darker it is, the more it absorbs light, and the lighter it is, the more it reflects light. So the solution must be to bring in more light for darker skin, right? Eh, wrong. Not the solution at all. Stupid. Bringing in more light is a very dated way to deal with darker skin. You can see it in classic Hollywood film. Take a look at how they used to light Sidney Poitier. It's massive amounts of light and all hard light to boot. Now a lot of this is because Hollywood pretty much exclusively used to use hard light, but also it's because they didn't know what to do with Sidney Poitier's skin. Sidney was a dark brother. Now camera color and light is calibrated by the people that make it, and that goes for both digital and film. But historically, cameras and film stocks were not made for darker skin tones. Now, when it comes to calibrating film cameras to properly light a subject, we attribute most of what we know to Kodak's work with Shirley cards from the 1940s through the 1990s. Color film was adjusted against these cards and named after model and Kodak employee Shirley Page, who appeared in the initial set of cards. It wasn't until the 1970s where things started to change, and it came from a very unlikely source. Companies that were advertising different kinds of wood furniture were complaining that Kodak film did not render the difference between dark grain wood and light grain wood. The other companies that Kodak responded to were chocolate makers. Today, color film and digital camera sensors have a much broader dynamic range, but the default towards lighter skin and technology still lingers. Now what people are doing today are just simply raising the IRE when there's a darker skinned person on camera. Side note, IRE is a unit of measuring light for video. It comes from measuring video signals and it's named after the Institute for Radio Engineers. And it's where you get scopes and charts such as false colors and waveforms. Anything at or below zero will be crushed with no detail at all, and anything above or at 100 will be completely white and clipped with no detail at all. Now, the problem with raising the IRE of a subject is it raises the entire image's IRE and not just the target, which is the subject. And that's where you get the super bright sitcoms that star black people such as Fresh Prince or The Cosby Show. Things look slightly brighter than they actually are, and that's not what you want, and truth be told, it's not really necessary. See, back when they were flooding Sydney with light, it's because the technology they had couldn't read things that dark. But today that's far from true. Both film and digital can both do so much more in the lower end of the spectrum. Especially with digital, which most people are using, you have way more information going under than over the target exposure. That's why it's much better to underexpose a digital image than overexpose it, because a lot of that information can be retained and recovered in post. Even with modern film stocks, you have much more room in the darker range than ever before. But we want to do this right. Enough with the explanation of how light works with cameras and everything. How do you light it on both film and digital? To circle this around to the beginning and talk about how exactly to do this, we need to talk about reflectivity. Dark colors absorb light, so what we need to do is make it more reflective. How do we do that? I'll let my OG Ernest Dickerson tell you exactly how he did it working on Spike Lee films in the 80s and 90s. Well, I think one of the keys is makeup. You know, a lot of times, you know, you powder people down to eliminate reflections on their skin. Black folks, you need reflections. So actually, I would always encourage them to use a moisturizer on their skin so that there's, you know, uh, reflections. In this day and age, you can even do that with makeup. In most cases nowadays, you're trying to make skin look more naturalistic. So if there is no makeup available, just add a moisturizer to the skin to make it a little bit more reflective. But if you do have a makeup artist, make sure they're using a makeup with a reflective base. Makeup with reflective bases can reflect the light being thrown at it. And it's very common to see today. But how do you light actual dark skin tones? Contrary to popular belief, it's not just hard light, especially when you've taken into consideration the reflectivity of the skin. Now you can use hard light if you want, and the reflectivity of the skin will allow you to contour and shape it better. But more often than not, we're seeing films and photographs using soft light. That's because it's more natural to the light we see most often in everyday life. And more importantly, it's better for spreading light across darker skin. Large source soft lights will allow you to spread the light across the skin and then meter for different parts of the skin tone. 
Again, Ernest Dickerson. Get a highlight and place that, for those of you who know the grayscale, place that at 18%, the highlight at 18%. Then the darker areas would still be on the curve. Caucasian tones were usually like a stop over that, which was pretty much where it should be. So I would always, you know, find uh, the reflection and base it on that. So mm -hmm. I would always use an incident meter to, to get me in the ballpark, but I would set my, I'd set my uh, f-stop with a spot meter. Side note, a spot meter meters the light of a spot that you pointed at. For instance, here. Most camera meters are spot meters. An incident meter measures the ambient light around or the light that's being pointed directly at a subject. Most camera meters and light meters measure correct exposure at 18% gray. So if you're spot metering for 18 gray at the highlights, based on this, you have about three or four stops before you reach complete black and four or five stops before you reach complete white. If you spot meter the highlighted part of the skin at 18% gray, you have plenty of dynamic range to allow the rest of the skin to go under and still retain detail. Now, I'm not talking about a big hard highlight. What I'm talking about is soft light that slowly transitions into other skin tones. That's why soft light is better for spreading out against darker skin. Now the goal is to never light your subject, but to illuminate them within the scene. Lighting them feels artificial, but illuminating them makes it feel natural like they're a part of the scene. Bone structure also comes into play. You can contour the light by putting it in different positions in order to highlight people's bone structure. That way you have highlights say on the top of the cheekbone and let it fall off underneath. Study your subject's face if you can and use your lighting to highlight the subject's bone structure. Now, if you don't know how to shape light or contour light for someone's face, I can do a video on that. Just let me know down in the comments below. Now, if there's a bunch of different people with a bunch of different skin tones, what you want to do is meter for the person in the middle and your camera and your film stock should be able to fall in place. Now, let's talk briefly about style and controlling the reflectivity. When you're using reflected light, you wanna be able to control it. And one of the things that Insecure's DP uses is a polarizer filter. That way you can control the amount of reflectivity that you have coming off their skin. I use a polarizer, which is a filter that goes um, in front of the lens. This actually works really well when you're lighting with you know, a reflected surface on skin tone because it can shape the light uh, in a really pretty amazing, effective way. Now, color is another great tool to use on darker skin tone, and that's because dark skin absorbs light, and all of that light becomes a part of their skin, whereas with lighter skin, it often reflects back and mixes together in ways that you don't want. Now, another great way is to embrace the darkness. Bradford Young is one of the most popular cinematographers out today, and he always embraces the darkness, especially with his darker skinned people. You accept the fact that if the person's looking at the lamp, they'll be front lit. And if I want to move around the person 360 degrees, it's okay that they're completely backlit because we've seen where the source is coming from. If they're completely in silhouette with a little bit of edge, they still feel like we're delivering, we're giving the audience what they need in terms of communicating whatever needs to be communicated at the moment. And it gives it a lot of visual texture. So first thing I do when I go in a room is I black the ceiling. First thing I do, black the ceiling. That's going to give you better shape. I, you know, so it's not always nice to have all this return on the face. I like stuff to be a little bit more, have a little bit more attitude, um, even though it's soft. You know? And then, you know, if it's blacking the floor or blacking a wall, you don't see, you could just start to be able to shape the light um, much more. Now, the final thing I want to talk about isn't skin at all. It's the color black. If you don't believe that this works, Look at the most recent Batman film. It uses everything that I've talked about, reflectivity, large soft lights, shaping lights, contouring, the grayscale chart, dynamic range, color, literally everything that I talked about. And that's just the color black. So if they can do that with the color black, you can do that with dark skin tones. Just stop being lazy, stupid.